tutorial. Um, I just finished my semester at school yesterday and I was really inspired to just kind of create new tutorials. I wasn't able to create one for a long time because I didn't have my um, set to record or anything for that matter. But I was really inspired to kind of get started right away and just kind of teach you guys, you know, how to create your own material, this nice wooden floor uh, texture. Um, I can also teach you guys how to get this nice look, but that, you know, that's all a matter of perspective. Um, you're going to need Arnold render for this, but you can do this with physical render and uh, Octane or any uh, third party render you want. Um, so let's get started. So there's two sites that I uh, recommend anyone to go to. The first one's going to be hdrlabs.com uh, provides several uh, HDRs for anyone to use. And it, it's, it's amazing that they provide this for you and they even teach you how to create your own if you want to ever do any in the future. The second one's going to be uh, texturelib.com. Uh, tons of free textures for anyone to use. Uh, I think wood does the best job of providing examples of just, you know, beautiful uh, wooden kind of textures when it, when it comes to rendering in Cinema 4D. So anyway, you can download any one of these examples if you want. Um, I decided to do this light brown plank texture. Uh, pretty sure it's around here somewhere. But anyway, uh, let's get started with this. So you can use Photoshop or After Effects for any one of these uh, uh, creating your own channels. But just for the sake of this, I use After Effects because I'm more comfortable with it. I'm a little upset that I spelled texture wrong. So shame on me for spelling wrong. So anyway, we're going to create our two channels. And the reason why I say two is because you already have one. That's your diffuse texture. So we're going to bring this onto a new composition. And if you don't know how to import it, we could just simply double click on our project and we could simply bring on our uh, wooden floor texture. So we have this in our new composition and we're just going to apply a few effects to get the specular and the bump channel. So the first one to get the specular is going to be our tint effect. And I mean tiny, I meant tint. And let's apply this. And this is already a specular. So what you could do is do Control Alt S and bring our output module to whatever format you want. I chose PNG just for the sake of it. And for the, you know, you can rename this if you want. So now we're going to get our other two effects. And the second one's going to be a brightness and contrast. And what you could do is just increase the contrast and simply increase the brightness. I'm going to increase the contrast a little more. Oh, that's way too much. Okay. Let's bring that down. And lastly, we could do a Gaussian blur. And this is just for blending in the areas just a little better than uh, it normally would. And then we could do the same thing, Control Alt S to save this as a bump channel. So that's all there is to creating your three images for your texture in Cinema 4D. Tap on into Cinema 4D now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a plane and we can leave this as default. You can change it if you want, but however, you can achieve a beautiful look just from the default look of it. And now we're, we're gonna, just for the sake of lighting, I'm gonna turn on my interactive preview render and we're gonna bring in our Arnold sky. And I'm just gonna zoom in on the plane, just kind of look down on it. And I don't know why my plane is upside down. I don't think I changed anything. Unless I'm upside down. Yes, I am. Okay, that was my fault. Just kind of look at this. That's pretty good. So anyway, uh, we're going to import our HDR into the sky. And I'm just going to... And you can see this color tab right here. Let's bring this down. You can see we have this value type. Let's change that from constant to texture. And let's drag in our HDR. And... You're going to be provided six images when you download your uh, texture. I recommend the one that says env.hdr. Hit open. It's going to ask if you want to create a copy to the project location. If you hit yes, it will simply create a copy to wherever you saved your project file. If you hit no, it's going to use the image that you simply double clicked on. So now let's create our Arnold material and get started. So I'm going to go to create Arnold surface standard. And what I'm going to do is first is just drag this onto the plane and let's open up that's a uh, network editor, double clicking on it, and then network editor. And now I can simply exit out and let's get started. So what I'm going to do is drag in the three images that I have with this. And I'm just going to simply take these three and just drag it onto the uh, board and they'll be uh, treated as nodes. 
so I'm just gonna do a little organization just kind of bring the bump there and just kind of make sure I, I know where I'm going at with it so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the diffuse or our texture into the diffuse color so we're gonna do the, go to main diffuse color and now we're gonna do our specular and we're just gonna drag this to its main specular color we're gonna do one more connection with it and that's our main specular weight and for the bump channel we're going to leave this alone for now we're going to actually bring in a color correct uh, node and let's actually bring this color correct node into the main diffuse weight and we're almost done actually with this and we're just going to create a bump 2d and now we can actually bring the standard onto its shader by going to the main and then shader and you can already see we're having a amazing progress just from the look of it and i'm going to bring this bump image over to its bump map and one last thing we could do is bring this output to the arnold beauty and now you can see it's really making a huge change but we can increase the bump height i'm going to increase it to five just for the sake of this uh kind of look so i'm going to exit out of that and that's pretty much how you get the material to kind of uh you know get this kind of dented look or not dented look but you know kind of where it seems like the wooden planks are actually you know placed together which is what i love about it and just for the sake of you know design and whatnot before i create my objects i'm just going to bring in a camera and i'm going to make sure i go into the camera and i'm going to change the focal length to a tele and you can see it really gets intense and detailed into it and i'm just going to zoom out quite a bit it's pretty good and now what I'm going to do is bring in just two spheres, just two simple spheres. I'm not really going to, you know, add some intense object to the scene. I'm just going to kind of bring this onto the plane and make it a little bigger. It's pretty good. Looks like it's kind of inside, but oh well. So I'm going to then duplicate this. And I am going to decrease this one just a little bit. I think. I think that was a lot actually. Yeah, that was a lot. And I'm gonna drag this downward, just kind of make sure it's sitting on the plane, kind of next to it. And for the sake of materials, I'm just gonna bring in two from the Arnold material library. And that's a gold material, and let's do this blue one. So I'm just gonna drag this gold to the bigger sphere and this blue one to this sphere. And now uh, we can go into our render settings and I already had this set up as my Arnold render. I already had this output as 1080. Um, the reason why I'm doing as a square image because I'm doing a personal project called Progress. It's, you know, the title kind of speaks for itself. It's all about my progress with Cinema 4D. I am trying to play around with different uh, areas of cinema that I never really would touch, like modeling and sculpting and particles and hair. I, I never really touched those areas at all. I've only been playing around with MoGraph and you know different shapes and you know just, just kind of these MoGraph and effectors I haven't really been playing around with X particles or anything so I'm just trying to get myself into more you know realistic and more you know dynamic kind of uh, looks so uh, anyway I'm gonna take these two spheres and just kind of increase the segments to about 72 so they're a little more rounder more you know spherical and lastly we're gonna get that depth of field look that I uh, have in the image and that is from uh, going to the camera just gonna go to cinema 4d to a tag and then arnold parameters and for the exposure i'm going to i usually use this exposure as kind of like a final lighting correcting correction so i'm just gonna drag this up a bit and you can see it gets a lot brighter when you uh kind of you know increase it and now we're gonna enable our depth of field and i'm gonna increase the aperture size to about 0.25 you could do as much as you want but like just be aware the higher you go the more it's gonna be blurred out as you can see in the preview render so um i'm gonna leave this back at point uh zero two five and i'm gonna increase the blades to about one and it's still a little blurry and that's because we didn't fo fix our uh, focus distance you can see it's about two thousand which is kind of a lot now we could do it just for the sake of time is drag this sphere onto the focus object and now anything past this uh focus sphere or this uh, sphere for the focus object it will uh blur it out so this background is gonna be nice and blurry but yet you know once it gets pat once it gets this area it's gonna be nice and crystal clear 
and that's overall how I was able to achieve that kind of look. The only difference is I went to my render settings and I cranked up uh, all these uh, settings. What I usually do for my default is kind of like five and four, 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 just for refraction, glossy, and diffuse in the camera. But for these two, I, us I usually put it at zero because I'm not messing with any smoke or any volume kind of uh, effects. And for the ray depth, I increase this to about three for all four of these tabs except for volume that stays at zero. But for this particular image that I used, I cranked it up to about, I think I upped everything by at least two, if I'm correct. Um, speed and speed and, and you know, it, it was not really my biggest concern because I usually go to sleep when I render all these images out. So for me to, you know, worry about having a render at, you know, 40 seconds, it's, it's amazing to have a, a beautiful render at 40 seconds. Don't get me wrong, but I just, like I said, speed is not really my concern. I, I care about my looks rather than the speed of it. Like I said, it's amazing thing to have a 40 second render looks just like the sphere, but you know, like I said, it, it's not really my biggest concern. So with that being said, um, that was the end of the tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys actually enjoyed it and hope you guys learned a lot from it. Um, I apologize if I, you know, messed up or said anything that was kind of off. Um, this is my first tutorial, so just bear with me on that and I hope you guys have a good day.